and welcome to another studio vlog. My name is Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes, a YouTube channel and growing online business encouraging you to stitch creativity and joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you all doing? I hope you are well, that you've had a great week. I'm doing well. I uh, have had a really good week. Um, it's been a stretch, a learning experience of really trying to be mindful as I have been the last couple of weeks I've been chatting with you all about uh, making sure that I'm taking time for myself in the midst of a big growth spurt in the business uh, with a lot of life changes happening still, which are kind of the dust is settling there and I'll be able to share a little bit more. I've alluded to it though, um, a lot of it due to COVID not being able to sing quite that much, um, or at all really, um, but also just ready for new chapters in my life as well. So it's been an exciting time. So, but with that comes anxiety and we're in a very eventful month right now, especially here in America. So it's been definitely a roller coaster of emotions and anxiety levels. And so this week I've really made sure to take time to meditate and journal, talk with my friends. I had like a three hour plus long chat session with my really good friend, Ashley Renee last night. And just really getting as grounded as I can um, in the midst of so much change happening. And also just knitting, not too much this week, but I'll chat about why that is. Knitting a bunch on my, well not a bunch, I just said it, not a lot, but knitting on my, when I can, on my sock um, and my shawl, which I'll chat about here. I got some happy mail for some things to look forward to, to cast on. And sewing, 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 which I am so grateful for on so many levels to have this amount of sewing to do one because sewing for me helps quiet my mind even more so than knitting these days it's something you have to really focus on and I, in production line sewing it still has that kind of knitting methodical repetitive nature to it and I've been doing, I'm grateful because of of you all for all of your orders this past week and I'm working on the bags to get them out to you by Monday. So in a couple of days here and um, yeah, so it's been a week again where I just have shot a little bit of what I've been up to throughout the week. Um, I've been 
cooking again. So I chopped up some cucumbers this morning to um, make some, uh, I think it's like a Korean Asian cucumber dish. It's just eyeballing it with um, some toasted sesame oil. And I use coconut vinegar and coconut aminos because I'm allergic to soy. And um, coconut aminos is a replacement for soy sauce. If you didn't know, it's fantastic. Um, and I'm getting ready to, I really want to make today a pumpkin curry dish. I'm saying it here because I need to make it and I want to make it. So there'll be some cooking later on today and I'm craving apple crisp and it's apple season and it's fall. It's pumpkin season. It's always pumpkin season. I'm looking at my pillow right now right now but it's also apple time so i really i got some extra apples at the store the other day so i want to make some apple crisp there's a couple different recipes that i want to try so we'll see which one i land on of course i'll share all of the details down below in the down bar and um i have definitely more sewing today but let's sit down and chat a little bit about what i've been knitting and making so I mentioned earlier my sock. This is just a simple toe up vanilla sock. I mainly use the pattern CC's cappuccino, vanilla cappuccino socks. Um, and with a fish lips kiss heel, this is the second sock. I've got the first one in here in my bag. Let me get it here. There you go. I'm using a skein of stash yarn by Once Upon a Corgi, and this is called Pukka's Pumpkin Spice in her glitzy base. I, I think it's called Ginger Base. I'm not, I can't remember. I don't think I have the ball band in here. Maybe I, I do. Let me see. No, for some reason I don't have the ball band. I'm knitting these on nine inch circulars. So just going around and round and round. Um, but as you can see, I didn't do a progress keeper from where I was at last week, but I haven't done too much. Um, the nine inchers are really great, but with the amount of sewing and cutting and all the other stuff I'm doing right now, my arms have been very much hurting by the end of the day and they're doing fine it's just from all of the repetitive ironing and everything that i've been doing for the bags um so i've been doing lots of massages like this kind of grabbing the muscles here and shaking it like this my friend denise earth tones girl hi denise she reminded me of this exercise and i've been living by it and so i've been doing this and the nine inches definitely are a little bit tougher on your arms um at least for me, um, when you're already sensitive, they're fine when it's kind of the main thing I'm doing. But right now it's just like super triggering all of the tightness and soreness in my arms. So I haven't been gravitating towards this too much, but I can't wait to get back to it and have these socks for October and um, November for pumpkin season. I'm making these also for the pumpkin Mao, the fifth annual pumpkin Mao that I am hosting with Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi. I'll have all the details down below on how you can join in. We're doing it over on Instagram this year and I'm loving all of your makes. Actually, that reminds me I need to catch up um, using the hashtag pumpkin 2020. I am so inspired by you all. Thank you so much for sharing. If you need a dose of inspiration of pumpkin orange Halloween goodness, check out that hashtag. It's open to all kinds of crafts. There's cross stitch, English paper piecing, quilting, all kinds of stuff in there. It is fantastic so and i'm also making these for the fuck fuck <laughs> for the fall sock cow hosted again by my friend denise who is earth who is earth tones girl i'll have the link down below to all of that as well so lots of cow goodness i need to look and see too because she's co-hosting socktober as well with marceline smith mars of hay brownberry so i need to see if whips are allowed i'm not sure um but i might enter them into that as well so lots of fun mouths what what make alongs and cows and stitch alongs are you taking part in let me know down below let us know i'd love to hear what else is going on as well and speaking of the pumpkin mouth we got a prize in for my friend Nina of Speckled Finch Studios. Speckled Finch Studios. 
look how gorgeous this is. So this is a set that will go out to a lucky prize winner. We're drawing prizes from Instagram, from the hashtag. If you are a private account, just tag me and let me know via direct message. I'll follow you to make sure I can see it. Um, and these are so pretty. These are both DK weight, so a special treat. This is in the pumpkin spice colorway. Oh, so, so pretty. It's in her bouncy DK base. It's 100% superwash merino, so it's absolutely gorgeous. Super, super soft and beautiful. Oh, definitely bouncy is a great description of this base. And then this beautiful colorway, oh my gosh, look at that right there. I love colorway. Oh, I'm getting hard yarn fumes. This is also Bouncy DK. This is Harvest. Just look at, oh, in the daylight right here is just beautiful. There's her beautiful ball band. Four ply, yeah. So, so pretty. So thank you so much. And she was so generous. She surprised me and gifted me a couple of fingering weight skeins in the same yarn. So I need to find something super special to make. I would love to combine these two. So if you have any ideas of a cowl, a shawl or something that I can make with these two colorways, let me know down below. They're both in four ply. Hardy Sock, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and they're each 100 grams, so I've got 200 grams here. God. Thank you, Nina. And then I got this in the mail. I treated myself to a, because I saw these were back in stock, Barrett Wool, one of my fave companies owned and run by Susan B. Anderson and her family the fall charm set. I have been wanting to make these little charms for ever since she came out with the pattern really. And I jumped at the chance to get the kit. Uh, I have a couple of people that I know that are making it right now with the kit. And they said you could get like three at least garlands out of this, if not more. So I really wanna make one for me, my mom, my sister, if she'd like one. Um, and look at all of the yarn that comes in it. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I have to admit there's no ball band or anything in here. So I can't remember the makeup of the yarn. So I'll put it down here below on the screen. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, I cannot wait. So you get all of these skeins in the kit. I think they're currently sold out. I'm sure they're working to try to restock it. Um, and I might have enough, I actually might not make a third charm kit. I might make the little witches that she's also had in there too. I mean, with these two colors would be amazing. And you get the pattern as part of this kit, of course. So there's a download code. You get a little thing of twine. And you. I was surprised I got a little tin of light bulb stitch markers as well, which were so sweet. And I love the packaging. I'm a sucker for packaging. So it came in this beautiful bag to hold it all together. And oh, it was such a treat. I loved getting it in the mail. I felt it had been a while since I had had some... Happy mail that I had gotten for myself. So my peacock shawl by Emily Walton um, through Expression Fiber Arts is humongous. And I am so here for it. It is definitely a schlanket, <laughs> uh, blanket slash shawl in the making. I'm only maybe like a third of the way done, I would say, if even that love it so much. I love the slip stitch pattern. I don't need to look at the pat at the um, pattern anymore. So I'm able to just knit and knit and knit. It feels very comparable to the habitation throw. The only difference is that for me, I don't, I can't um, look up as much as when I did the habitation throw. This is a habitation throw, by the way. I've got a couple of them back here. This is like garter and then every so many rows you do um, some yarn overs to get this eyelet pattern. Um, and in this case, um, 
you do the slip stitch on the front and on the back you purl. I'm getting better about trusting my purling and not looking at down at my needles um, when I purl, but I'm no, nowhere near as comfortable feeling it um, as when I'm doing knitting. Something to work on, but yes, I'm so excited. So I'm on the second color. I'm using Stash Yarn by Legacy Fiber Arts in their 2016 um, Hocus Pocus colorways. So these are the earlier versions of those colorways. The first one is Winifred or Winnie Sanderson. The second one that I'm on right now is Mary Sanderson. I've got a little prog witchy progress keeper that I can't remember where I got it. I think it was a gift maybe, who knows. <laughs> and then I am going to be adding Sarah Sanderson and then Spellbook eventually. <laughs> And I am, I've got about this much left of uh, Mary. And this is what a full skein looks like. So I'm making my way through it. This is what I ended up with for the first color. I think it's, I need to wait again. And I think I have it written down on my Ravelry page, which is linked down below. It's um, 30 grams, I think is where I stopped. Uh, so I'm getting pretty close. Well, no, I'm not. I'm probably about halfway to this point. Um, but yeah, I'm loving it. I'm using five US 5 Carbons needles. Thank you all again so much for, again, so much for your feedback about interchangeables. I am going to invest at some point soon into a Chow Gu interchangeable set because these are just they're like five years plus old now. So the threads on the needles um, that you then attach the cables to have worn out. So yeah, they're just kind of ready. And plus I just prefer chow goos now anyway, you know, your tastes and um, preferences in needles change uh, the longer you knit and goes back and forth or sometimes it just ebbs and flows so this was my first set so it's working for right now but yeah I'm ready to ready to do something else and that is predominantly what I've been making this week I've just been sewing 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 and I have got most of the the majority of the larger bags done larger meaning all but the notions bags and the drawstring bags so this weekend I need to finish the I need to make the notions bags and drawstring bags and then finish everything up on Monday and get it out to in the mail to you all so it's been a very tall order it's been a big order, um, the most orders that I've had so far, and I'm just, again, so, so grateful. And I'm looking forward to making up the rest of the bags um, so that they'll be ready to ship. Um, and I am hoping next week, or maybe, yeah, I mean, we've got the weekend, so I'm going to be ordering Christmas fabric next week and another round of It's Always Pumpkin Season fabric, as well as the favorite, which I knew was going to happen. I'm so glad that you love the books and tea fabric. I will be ordering another big round of fabric uh, to make bags in November. Um, so those will be coming out in November and early November. I'll have a date closer to the time. I got... A jury summons in the mail the other day so yeah fingers crossed they hear my plea <laughs> I don't have to sit on a jury I will do my duty if called but yeah cross your fingers and toes that's why I'm not able to officially announce kind of the next shop update to order the November shop update because it kind of depends on what my schedule will be then so just a heads up there anyway i'm gonna get to it and make some notions bags and i will check in with you all a little bit later
I am almost done with the audiobook that I've been listening to, The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd. It is definitely one of my top 10, maybe even top five favorite books of all time. I love it so much. I can't wait to gather my thoughts, organize all of the thoughts and ideas that I have from reading this book and to share them with you all. Have any of you read it? I could not recommend it more highly. It's so good. Okay, back to sewing. <laughs> done sewing for the day. It's five o'clock. I have to be honest, I did not account for how long those little notions bags take, especially in the amount that I'm making. So I'm about two thirds of the way done and I have a couple more hours left on them at least um, that I'll have to finish up tomorrow. But I'm feeling still really good. That being said, my grand plans for a veggie pumpkin curry and apple crisp are gonna have to wait, I think, until these orders get out the door to you all. So I will leave the links down below to the recipes that I have in my queue because they're so yummy looking. If you make them, please let me know. I'm so eager to make them. So keep an eye out next week's for next week's vlog and I'll be sure to share the process so yummy vegan um veggie pumpkin curry and then i think so there's a couple of recipes there's an apple crisp kind of recipe from cotter crunch and then i can't remember if it's from cotter crunch i think it also is she had like a a great newsletter that came out a few weeks ago or about a week ago of apple recipes that are allergy friendly paleo vegan all that stuff and um, there was one for like a proper apple crisp like bake. And then there was one that was for a mug cake. And y'all know if you've been watching, especially this year, I love me a mug cake. It's so good. So I might, if I get another burst of energy, I might try that later this evening. But we shall see. But I'm going to finish for the day. I'm going to probably just mix a nice little bowl of pasta and chill out for the evening and then get back to it tomorrow. I know it's usually my day off, but I'm eager to give these to you all. So I'm going to call it a day and an end to this week's vlog. I hope that you all are doing well, that you are staying safe. I'm sending all of my love to you and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.